comics, has says but, and I'm super excited today. You know why? Because I love when everything comes together. Um, what am I talking about? I'm just going to jump right into it. I know you guys see everything on the news with sexual harassment, sexual assault, and it's just going crazy right now. Senator Al Franken just resigned, and it's just a, a wild storm. But the reason why I'm happy is because there's so many things happening, and that's what I'm here for, to show you guys the receipts, to show you the facts. So the first thing I want to start with is this lady. I don't know if you guys remember her. Her name is Hillary Clinton. Probably you heard of her. <laughs> she was supposed to be our president. And the reason why I'm starting this video with Hillary Clinton is for a very good particular reason. And the reason is Hillary Clinton did not win the white feminist vote. Um, 53% of white American women voted for Donald Trump. I know it's hard to believe because if you look at the environment now, you think we didn't have any feminists back in the election time. You would think that you know, there were no feminists because where were they? These same people calling out for Harry Weinstein and the same people calling out for these senators, these same reporters caping for women that, you know, they say something, believe them. You got to believe the women. You got to believe the women. When Donald Trump came out on his own, okay, not just an allegation. He got caught on tape saying, go grab pom poms. No one ever came forward and say, believe the women, believe the women. It was just like, it never happened. And I just want to read this right here. You guys know um, I always show you guys the receipts. So this is an article by Vox, and it says right here, Hillary Clinton has a theory about why she lost with white women. Okay? So I want to read the first thing to you. The fact that 53% of white women voters cast their votes for Donald Trump in November has been a source of consternation, shame, and anger in the months since as many Americans wondered how so many white women could vote for a man who bragged about grabbing women by the genitals. So guys, this is not me being, you know, bombastic or edgy or trying to get clicks. This is an actual article. That's why I'm showing you the receipt. I'm showing you the receipt. So you're going to see, you, you don't got to read this whole article. But this is what I have to say. I'm going to sum it up for you because that's my job. Basically, white women that voted for Trump put their, I guess, their uh, their race before their self-interest. Because if you look at Donald Trump and you look at Hillary, I'm not going to talk about politics that in depth. But we know that Hillary was more vulnerable to the needs of the black community, to the needs of minorities, to the needs of women of color, not just white women. Donald Trump, on the other hand, he's being endorsed by the KKK. He has an endorsement from David Duke, a former grand wizard, whatever you want to call those pieces of crap, for the KKK. He's being endorsed by white nationalists. He's being endorsed by neo-Nazis. So no matter what you think of Hillary, we're not going to go into that. But there's no question that if it came down to who would prospectively do more for the black community, even if you think Hillary messed up and she did blah, 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 Hillary is more open. She is more likely to work with black communities than Donald Trump ever could. So I think when these white feminists voted, they put their race first and they, they don't they don't consider the, the plights of other minority women as part of their plights. Because if they did, he wouldn't be in office. 90% of black women voted for Hillary. We did our job. 80% of black men, as much as you would like to shit on them, black men voted for um, Hillary. They did their job. The only major group that messed up was white women. The same white women who are now caping for everybody to get taken down for sexual harassment. It's a power thing. It's a dominance thing. It has nothing to do with equality because the two can't exist in the same realm. That's all I'm trying to tell you guys. If it's truly about, oh my God, sexual assault, sexual harassment, it's about dominance. It's about a power play. And if they were to put Hillary in office, they would have to compete with powerful women of color. They would have to go off, you know, and share their concerns of abuse and anything dealing with women issues with black women. And so rather than share that spotlight, rather than have a diverse, you know, conversation, diverse awareness for all types of women, not just white. Because right now the conversation is what? If you came from planet X, let's say you came from an alien planet and you turn on the TV, you would only think that white women were the only ones getting hurt. You would only think that white women were the only ones that were um, vulnerable. So you have to understand when 53% of white women voters cast their vote for Donald Trump, 
in November, it was a source of consternation, shame, and anger in the months since, as many Americans wondered how so many white women could vote for a man who bragged about grabbing with Marta Genitalia. So this is not Connie coming up with this narrative. This is what I do, guys. I find the facts. I read the facts. I show you the receipt. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. And I'm trying to show you overall, their interest is not the overall veteran of women. It's not because I got secrets, son. I got secrets. Sit down, son. This is going to be probably the best video I've ever done. Because I've been going through this whole accumulation of ideas and theories. And I've been putting things piece to piece together for years. Because I've been fascinated. Totally fascinated how the American public at whole has allowed extreme feminists to ignore massive demographics who are truly getting hurt, killed, raped, murdered, maimed, abused, molested. You know, I volunteer. I donate. Anyone who knows me knows I'm a sap. I spend my time. I'm passionate about abuse. I'm passionate about domestic violence. I'm passionate. Anybody that knows me says, oh my God, Kanye, don't get her started. So when I see white women excluding women of color purposely, this is not some, it's not, it's not like you could confuse the two. It's like having Megatron and Optimus Prime and saying which one's not about and which one's a Decepticon. It's like, come on, son. You know, the red, white, and blue. It's Optimus Prime. It's the American flag. And you know, the old white one is Megatron with the red ass eyes. Like, come on, guys. You, you have to take a cold, hard look. And if we don't go into this situation, if we don't say hi to the elephant in the room, things like this will continue to keep happening. And this situation is getting very dire. So let me, let me go through some stuff with you. So remember I told you it's a power struggle? Remember I told you it's white extreme feminists and not all white women because you got Pamela Anderson. Be sure to check my Pamela Anderson video. Um, you know, be sure to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell. But also be sure to check the Pamela Anderson video I did. She is pro guy. She talks about, you know, in very subliminal texts about extreme white feminists. She talks about, you know, what happened with Harry Weinstein and these women went into the room. They knew what they were getting into. So, you know, just check that video out. Be sure to check my two Pamela Anderson videos out. But what I'm trying to tell you is that this is a power grab. And if you're going to say, Connie, you just, you just doing clickbait. And Connie, why are you attacking feminists? No, I'm not attacking real feminists because this is garbage. This is, this is misogyny the other way around against guys. So let me just make you watch this video. Okay, so turn your volume up. I'm going to try to um, turn my volume all the way up there. And I'm going to play. This is a Democratic candidate for state attorney general for Michigan. And she says... Democratic candidate demands vote for not, having, for not having a penis, literally. So she's talking about separate incidents that have nothing to do with Michigan, nothing to do with her campaign, nothing to do with her opponent. Look at what she's doing. You tell me if a man did this. Look what she's going to say. If the last few weeks has taught us anything, it's that we need more women in positions of power, not less. So, when you're choosing Michigan's next attorney general, ask yourself this. Who can you trust most not to show you their penis? Let's look a pause it right there. Who can you trust most not to show you their penis? This is a this is this was on prime time. This is a real commercial. This is a state attorney general. Well, she's running for state attorney general. She's a candidate. This is what this I, I saw this commercial on prime time. I saw it on MSNBC at four o'clock in the afternoon. YouTube, please let this 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 video play. I saw it at four o'clock in the afternoon. And she's talking about who can you trust not to show you their you're criminalizing all men. You're demonizing all men. When I talk about extreme feminists, booyaka booyaka, this is what I'm talking about. You don't do this. I, I have a brother. I have a father. They're not walking around waving their, their, their eggplants at everybody. How, who do you think you are? And if a, if a man did this the other way around and say, who can you trust not to show your poom poom? Could you imagine the outcry? It, so you don't want equality because that's equality. Equality means equal treatment. 
You want dominance. You want to be able to say and do things that men can't do. But you want to go ahead and do it to them. So you want to emasculate men. This is a serious thing. You guys think it's a joke. It's going to get more and more. Listen to the rest of the video. It's only a few seconds. In a professional setting. Is it the candidate who doesn't have a penis? I'd say so. Some people will tell you, I can't be the Democratic nominee for Attorney General here in Michigan because we can't have an all-female ticket for statewide office in 2018. Pundits and insiders are asking, can we afford to have a female governor, a female attorney general, and a female secretary of state? Well, I read the So let me just stop right there. You already have a female governor. You already have a female attorney general. And now she's running for, okay, this candidate in the blue jacket is running for female secretary of state. If we are such a sexist, anti-woman society, and get don't get me wrong, as a black woman, I know we have massive issues to overcome with discrimination and sexual harassment. I, I know it. I live it. But when you try to overplay your hand and really overplay your hand, because if you got a female governor, and you got a female attorney general, and now you're running for a female secretary of state, um, obviously that state has no issues with women, so that's not your problem. You are using, you are using these things where men are being punished, losing their jobs, whatever the situations may be, to discredit your, your prospective candidate. This is not, no man can get away with this. This is out, th th what she did here, and I'm a Democrat. I'll tell you that right now. And what she did here was absolutely wrong because you're demonizing and criminalizing and emasculating all men. So I'll play the rest for you. And news, and I bet you do too. And it has me wondering, can we afford not to? Now, if you want to know more about what I'll do as Michigan Attorney General, head to Dana2018.com. But right now, I want to tell you what you can expect me not to do. I will not sexually harass my staff, and I won't tolerate it in your workplace either. I won't walk around in a half-open bathroom, and I'll continue to take all sex crimes seriously, just like I did as a prosecutor. You won't find me using your hard-earned tax dollars to silence victims or join right-wing lawsuits that make it harder for you to get health insurance. I'll be too busy doing what I've always done, going to bat for the people who need it most, and winning. Yes, I'm a woman. That's not a liability. And I just want to stop it right there. To all my black female listeners, do you see, do you understand what's happening? If I rewind the video, it seems like they are comfortable talking about gay rights. They're comfortable talking about transgender rights. They're comfortable talking about anything but discrimination. Anything that happens with people of color. I'm not talking about discrimination against transgender, discrimination against gay marriage. I'm talking about they are not comfortable. If you look, white feminists do not touch racial discrimination with a 10-foot pole. Look how many strides since the introduction of gay rights. Look how many strides gay rights have made. They have made astronomical strides. I'm from Manhattan. I'm from New York. And when the gay pride parade came, you have police cars covered in the gay pride flag. You have people in their stores. Just, I don't want to say store names, but you had many companies. We all saw on Facebook, on Instagram, on LinkedIn. You had a lot of companies out there promoting gay rights. And I was like, great. That's amazing. I was like, yeah, good for them. Then I thought about Black History Month and how lonely we are. And, and it's still controversial. Like, there is no banner for Facebook for uh, Black History Month. There is no company I can think of that proudly says, we celebrate Black History Month. Uh, it's still controversial. It's 2017, about to be 2018. It's still controversial for companies. You'll never go by and see, you know, for example, and I'm just giving an example, in a Macy's store window on 34th Street, you know, talking about, you know, Black History Month or African Pride or this and that. You'll never see it. But we are like, so advanced. You had companies giving out gay pride flags. You had companies do. I got. I got jealous. I was like, gosh, it's like the tortoise and the hare. It's like black rights was the hare and gay rights was a tortoise. And somehow, some way, that tortoise is way past. 
because you're getting a lot of attention a lot of attention so i'll continue with the rest of the video it's only a few seconds left i'm dana nessel i approve of putting more women on the ticket in november and i approve this message all right so it's it's finished all right so this is dana nessel from michigan attorney general that is her message and she basically smashed men and said, you know, vote for me. I don't have a woohoo. I don't have an eggplant. And this is what I'm trying to say. That when I say that it's not about, if, if you are so pro woman, why didn't Hillary Clinton win the presidency? If you are so anti this, if sexual harassment is happening like water, if it's pouring out the faucet like water, like we see right now, that faucet keeps drip, drip, drip drip then how come these same it doesn't it doesn't correlate there's a disconnect and i truly have evidence of the disconnect is you know hillary clinton can be associated with minorities and the white women that want to be you know all about sexual harassment they don't want to be associated with minorities and that's why when you look at the data that's why when you look at the data for who's truly victims, disproportionately African-American women, a lot of mercy, okay, African-American women are the ones being killed, kidnapped, raped, molested, beaten, domestic violence, real street harassment, getting slashed, getting attacked, getting chased. And if you look on the media, there is no mass media attention. I'm going to keep saying it. Over 65,000 black women are missing. And you can't tell by looking at the media. If I came from Planet X and I turned on the TV, I would think only white females were sexually assaulted. And we all know from the data, that's not true. It ain't right, man. So let's X out of this. And thank you guys for being with me. I'm going to show you more evidence. All right, so we, we looked at that, and now I want to show you the facts. You know, I always show you the receipts. All these things will be in the links. This is Women of Color Network Facts and Stats Collection. I'm not going to read this whole thing, but this comes from the Women of Color National Advocacy Through Action. All right, so it's a project of National Resource Center on Domestic Violence. And all these facts on the first page come from the American Bar Association, Know Your Rights, Women's Institute for Leadership Development for Human Rights, the Treatment of Women of Color on the United States Law of Violence, and an Administration for Children and Families, ACF Domestic Violence. So this, this is not Connie making it up. These are all the citations here. Can you see me lighting it up? So you have the USDOJ, Extent, Nature, and Consequences of Intimate Partner Violence. You have the Bureau of Justice Systems, the Bureau of Justice Statistics, Feminist Majority Foundation's Choice Campus Campaign. All right. You have Nash, Shroudis, and Terrence, Do Black Eyes, American Women, African American Women, Construction of Their Experiences with Intimate Male Partner Violence. So you have all of this, okay? And you're trying to tell me that white feminist missed it? You're trying to tell me that the majority of women who are in these feminist groups just happen to be white Americans, and nobody noticed that the disproportionately Women of color are having staggering challenges with everything they're fighting for. Am I supposed to believe? Let's, let's just go to the list real quick. Fear of isolation and alienation. Strong loyalty to both immediate and city family. Yoke of silence. Guarded trust and reluctant to discuss private matters. Fear of rejection. Individual needs often deferred to family strength and unity. Distrust of law enforcement. Fear of subject, subjecting themselves and loved ones to criminal and civil justice systems. Um, skepticism and distrust in, from the shelters. Okay, so look here. It, it, for women of color, high rates of poverty, poor education, limited resources, language barriers, and fear of deportation increase the difficulty finding health and support services. So these are, this is, these are the statistics that make women of color more vulnerable, 10 times more. But if you watch the news, look at African American. Oh God, an estimated 29.1% of African American females are victimized by intimate partners, rape, physical assault, or stalking. African American females experience intimate partner violence at a rate of 35%, 35% higher that of white females and about 2.0 times the rate of women of the other races. Um, however, they're less likely than white women to use social programs, better women programs, or go to go to the hospital because of domestic abuse. All right. 
And according to the National Violence Against Women survey, African American women experience higher rates of intimate partner homicide when compared to their white counterparts. Statistics show that African American women typically comprise about 70% of black congregations. Religious convictions and a fear of shame or rejection from church may contribute to them remuning in abate, uh, um, abusive relationships. Okay, so as a result of historical and present day racism, African American women may be less likely to report to her abuser and seek help. And these are all the data here. Okay, these are statistics and data. This is not crap. So I'm trying to understand. Help me understand. Help me understand how the majority of these institutions, even Jane Fonda said it. You can Google that. Jane Fonda said this is prevalent in the black community and the Harry Weinstein victims are only getting attention because they're white and famous. I'm not making this up. I'm repeating the facts. I'm showing you the receipt. So I want to talk about something else. You know, let, let me, let me look through my links. I'm going to X them out as I go. And, um, let me look at my links. So, um, this is another thing. This is why I don't believe you. You need more people. Black women are historically dying in childbirth. Historically in America. And at first they said, oh, it's income. It's obesity. It's our disposition to our bad diet. Now it's coming down to mofo race. Okay. Nothing protects black women from dying in childbirth. Not education, not income, not even being an expert on racial disparities in healthcare. So you have this gorgeous sister down here. She is gorgeous. She was, um, her name is Shalon, Mar Shalon Maureen, and she was a lieutenant commander in the unified, uniform ranks of U.S. Public Health Service. So this is, this is a military female, okay? And she died in childbirth. And they went through her records, and she actually had, you know, medical issues. That could have been easily, easily averted. Her death was one of the 60% of African-American deaths in childbirth. That could have been easily avoided. It is racism. Okay, even black people who are not in a low economic bracket has been statistically shown to have their symptoms ignored. I know about that personally. And I'm trying to tell you, white groups, uh, feminist groups, do you hear about this? Are we not Americans? Are we not Americans? I, that's what I want to know. Are we not included? When you say women's rights, you should have a divider and say white women rights on Monday, black women rights on Thursday, because obviously we are not included. You can't keep failing and missing at every single corner. If you don't care about our rights, then let us know and we'll take up the mantle. We'll be more proactive. We'll bring awareness. But I guess it's not cute to say we don't care about black women. And it's not me trying to cause a race war. You can't keep missing the target. That's like me walking into my house and seeing a hundred cats that are all white with blue eyes. Meow. And I walk back out. Anything strange, Connie? Ah, uh, no. You know, you might. You, uh, I don't know. You, you're good. You're good. You're good. That's equivalent. Because what you're, this is a room full of cats screeching. It's getting to the point where people are dying. Let me read it to you real quick. In recent years, as high as, as high rates of maternal mortality in the U.S. have alarmed researchers, one statistic has been especially concerning. According to the CDC, black mothers in the U.S. die at three to four times the rate of white mothers. One of the widest of all racial disparities in women's health. Where's a women's health white activist? Where, where them dead? Where them dead? Okay. Um, put another way, a black woman is 22% more likely to die from heart disease than a white woman. 71% more likely to perish from cervical cancer. But 300% more likely to die from childbirth. Wait a minute. Rotted. 300% more. I'm just going to sit here for a second because I know I'm talking a lot. Let me fix my body in this chair. Because if you watch this video and you don't get what I'm trying to say to you, I don't care if you're white, black, purple, Asian, Haitian. This is not an oversight, guys. 300% increase in anything is hard to miss. If you had a 300% on your investment, on your stock, you would lose your mind. This is not like, um, it, it's not like, it, it's not like, okay, I missed it. And we're sorry about that. It, it's not. It's not like that. This is. This is on purpose. 
Okay, this this is this is something that's done on purpose. And uh, when I say this, people say, Connie, that's not nice. So you have to explain to me how a country like the United States, number one superpower in the world, is missing. But 300% more likely to die in childbirth. I want to have a baby. Am I going to die? Am I going to die? I'm scared. In a national study of five medical complications that are common cause of maternal death and injury, black women were two to three times more likely to die than white women who had the same condition. Why? The, that imbalance has persisted for decades. In some places, it continues to grow. In New York City, my hometown, for example, black mothers are 12 times more likely to die than white mothers, according to recent data for 2001 to 2005. Their risk of death was seven times higher. Researchers say the widening gap reflects a dramatic improvement for white women, but not for blacks. So let me say it again. If you're still here with me, God bless you. Thank you so much. Researchers say that the widening gap reflects a dramatic improvement for white women, but not for blacks. Really? Really? How do you think, how do you think that's happening? Because nobody's caping for us. You're saying women rights, but you don't mean women rights. You mean white women rights. And that's why. If we're all, we, we both got the same poom poom. We both got the same blood. It's not about economics. You go to the doctor, you got insurance. A doctor's a doctor. So what's happening? What's happening? This sister up here, she worked for the government. She, she's in a, she's in a, a lieutenant commander in the uniform ranks of the U.S. Public Health Service. This is not a, a, a ghetto chick having some ghetto baby. This is this is absolutely unac unacceptable. All right, the disproportionate toll on African Americans is the main reason the U.S. maternal maternal mortality rate is so much higher than other affluent countries. So so many black women are dying. We affect the entire rate of maternal mortality. Do you understand what that means? Black expected and new mothers in the U.S. die at about the same rate as women in other countries such as Mexico and Uzbekistan, the World Health Organization estimates. So you got people in America dying like Uzbekistan? You know what? Do I have to stop the video? Because I'm getting emotional. Like, do I have to stop? Because if you guys watch this video and you are not moved... Why I say extreme white feminism is not for you. When I said it years ago, people say, Connie, oh, don't say that, Connie. How could you say that? I mean, God, no, because we're dying. We're dying more than people in Mexico and Uzbekistan. Where's Uzbekistan? So it, it, it's, it's a massive thing that's happening and people are ignoring it. What, let, let's read the next one. What's more even relatively well off? What's more? Comma. Even relatively well-off black women like Shalon, Irvin, die or nearly die at higher rates than whites. So you can't even talk about the economics of it. You can't even talk about the social behavior of it because she's well-off. She's educated. She's economically elevated. And she's still dying. So, gee, what is it? Skin color. Gee, what is it? Racism. Uh, what, why don't we want to talk about race? We're so anxious not to talk about race. Well, let's just die. Let's just make it. People are dying. Mothers who give birth don't even get to see their child. This is a serious thing. Again, again, New York City offers a startling example. A 2016 analysis of five years of data found that black college educated mothers who give birth in local hospitals were more likely to suffer severe complications of pregnancy or childbirth than white women who never graduated high school. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? So you got black women who are educated, college educated mothers who gave birth in local hospitals were more likely to suffer severe complications of pregnancy or childbirth than white. So if it was an economical thing, if for the economy relax, it's money, black people tend to be more poor, and black people tend to have, no, 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 there's demographics upon demographics upon demographics. This is 2017. We got satellites going to the fucking galaxy. This is not 10,002. This is, this is, this is 2017. Okay. This is, we, we are in or the present time. And we are able to look at demographics along all metrics. So you got to be able to explain to me how can a college educated person die more than someone who has, who never graduated from high school. It's right here. 
A 2016 analysis of five years of data found that black college-educated mothers who gave birth in local hospitals were more likely to suffer from severe complications of pregnancy or childbirth than white women who never graduated from high school. I'm still here. Oh, oh, I, I just, oh, I don't know what to say anymore. This is why I made this channel. Because she's educated. She got a good job. She got a bachelor's. But sister, God bless her soul, she's dead. So I can talk about Hatshepsut economics, but if you're not watching out for this, you could be Hatshepsut dead, 12 feet, 10 feet under. You can't make stock investments in the ground. You know, so I'm going to read some more. The fact that someone with shallow social and economic advantages is at a higher risk highlights how profound the inequalities really are. The chief, the person who said it was Reagan McDonald, the chief medical officer for Plant Parenthood Federation of America, who met her in graduate school at John Hopkins University and was one of her closest friends. It tells you that you can't educate your way out of the problem. This is what I've been trying to say. Okay? You can't health care access your way out of the problem. There's something inherently wrong with the system that's not valuing the lives of black women equally to white. So this is, it's not rocket science, guys. It's racism. And it's not evil KKK racists. I call this social racism. When we've accepted stereotypes, when we normalize racism, because we, we normalize biases and it's getting so bad that nobody wants to talk about it. But we want to talk about Sally getting touched with her wrist in the lunchroom by Bob. And you have to understand my frustration when this is not talked about on TV. If it was a for Hatch Sess, but you wouldn't even know. I want to have a baby. I plan to get married very soon. I'm 38. I would love to have children. Do I have to die? I'm very scared. Do, do, I, do I have to not have children to live? Because I am that demographic that's educated. I'm thinking that can't happen to me. But if you ignore any complications I have because of the color of my skin, if you don't take the same care of me because of the color of my skin, what am I supposed to do? You want me to trust the feminists? Where are they on this matter? Have they segregated us from the, the issues? Because they don't talk about us. All I hear about is people went on dates and, and, and all this other stuff. We're not on TV. So let me get out of this situation because it's getting me in my feelings. So let me let me actually change this page here. All right. I'm going to bring you to another thing. This is my state, New York City. And now they've legalized street harassment. A variety of forms of street harassment are illegal in New York, including verbal harassment, upskirt photos, indecent exposure, following, groping and hate crimes. Here are the laws. So basically, you can this unreasonable noise is considered street harassment. So whistling at women, abusive obscene languages or obscene gestures in public, that's illegal. Obstructing vehicle or pedestrian traffic. This is my favorite. Congregating with a group in a public place and refusing to comply with a lawful police officer's order to disperse. So you know how guys like to stand on the street corner and say, psst, psst, "Hey, yo, ma," it's freaking annoying. Would I want to lock men up in prison for that? No. But this is because Buck Becky is moving into predominantly black neighborhoods. The reason why you're hearing so much street harassment nonsense out of nowhere is because you have gentrification going on. We talked about this before. Gentrification is going on and you're having predominantly poor urban neighborhoods. And a lot of, you know, white affluent people are moving in, making it like mini Manhattans, making it very bougie. This is happening all across the country. And when Becky moves in, Daquan's like, yo, Becky, look good, son. And she, he's like, yeah, yo, ma, hey, yo, ma. And he thinks that Becky is Shaquana. Daquan, she's not Shaquana. Da Daquan, please sit down, have a seat. Because she will call the cops on you. She ran to the government and made sure that, look at this. Example of street harassment might be considered disorderly conduct in New York, including yelling. Sexist or homophobic comics, comments, using obscene, offensive language, lewd language, or someone blocking your path on the street. Um, 
The penalty, disorderly conduct, a violation carries a fine of $250 up to 15 days in jail. I want to know why. You know, they're talking about it, and you see the you see the lady here with the hair, street harassment's a crime. You know, it, see, men think my name is Psst, Ma, or A.O. Shorty. I'm not making it up, guys. It's right here. I'm afraid to work with my sisters and friends of night. I'm followed by older men. And look, men think Psst, Ma, or A.O. Shorty. If that's not a reference towards black men that worship these white women, and you know what? Go where the love is. But you might want to be careful where you think the love is. This word, psst, ayo ma, there's no way that any law enforcement, psst, ayo ma, this is, a, this is a female. And they've been saying, psst, ayo ma, to black women for years. And we kiss, we ignore. It's called iPod. We put it in our ears, we ignore. Just don't touch us. Don't grab us. Because I agree with that. Don't put your hands on us. I agree with that. Don't touch us. But I'm not going to call the pops for psst, ayo, ma. It's right here. Psst, ayo, ayo, shorty. I'm reading it. So now she don't like it. And, and she's going to report you. And now they're saying it's illegal for you to be around school, colleges, universities, school bus. It's, Ill it's illegal to be in public places, to gamble or play cards. It's illegal to be at a transportation facility or at a permit or a purpose of selling merchandise or performing, hanging out any near school, hanging out on the street. I'm reading from the document here. Okay, loitering near a school, a public transportation, $250 in jail. Like, it goes on and on. So now this is interesting. It is, Ill it is illegal for anyone to solicit or request another person to engage in sexual conduct. So if the guy is calling you, and trying to talk to you, and the girl thinks you're trying to engage in sexual conduct. Yeah. Yeah. But it says, we do think it's inappropriate for a street harasser to make assumptions about your sexual availability and make you feel uncomfortable. So that's a gray area. So if a guy trying to talk to me on the street, and I, I, I can say, oh my God, he's accusing me of being a sex worker, arrest him. This is serious stuff, guys. This is serious stuff, all right. And it's 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 kind of um it's a long document. I'll include it. And like I said, touching, groping, grabbing, you know, cursing, harassment, fuck you, and that that yeah, that kind of language. Excuse my language. That kind of language. Yeah, that's pretty bad. That shouldn't be allowed. But if you're talking about ps, ps, ayo ma shorty. You, you're going to send people to, to jail for that? All right. All right. Anyway, moving along. So this is what I really want to cover. So if you're still with me, God bless you. Watch this video in parts. It's going to be great. So look at this. Center for Disease Control. STDs at a record high. This is fresh off the presses. This is fresh off the presses. So this is the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. It says STDs are at a record high, indicating urgent need for prevention. So this is brand new. This is September 26, 2017. All right. And it says more than 2 million cases of chlamydia, gonorrhea, and syphilis were reported in the United States in 2016. The highest number ever, according to the annual Sexually Transmitted Disease Surveillance Report, released today by Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The majority of these new cases, 1.6 million were chlamydia. Those were also 470,000 cases of gonorrhea and almost 28,000 cases of primary and secondary syphilis, the most infectious stages. While all three of these STDs can be cured with antibiotics, if left undiagnosed and untreated, they can have serious health consequences, including infertility, life-threatening epitopic pregnancy, stillbirth in infants, and an increased risk for HIV transmission. So epidemic accelerating in multiple populations, all right, impacting women, infants, children, gay and bisexual men, while young women, I just want to say this out loud, young women continue to bear the greatest burden of chlamydia, nearly half of all diagnosed infections and um, surges in syphilis and gonorrhea are increasingly affecting new populations. So I just want to stop right there. I'm not going to make you want to vomit. So you're probably like, Connie, where are you going with this, son? Connie, why, what, why are you bringing this up? This is another false thing of the feminist movement. Women are 
really being, uh, they're being affected by the hookup culture. They've done research on this. Apps like Tinder, apps like OkCupid, apps like Plenty of Fish. People are hooking up excessively, but they're not using good habits. And the sexual nature of it, the more exposure of it, this is a record indicating urgent need for prevention. Because if we don't cap it off there, you're going to have a massive part of the population getting STDs and also being five times more vulnerable for AIDS. But yet you have the white extreme feminists pushing for sex the same way men would. There's always been a balance. Whether you like it or not, there's been a balance. Men like sex. Women want love. Women love sex too. But it's, you can't have the same of both genders because you have women pursuing sex just as much as men are pursuing sex. And now you're having an astronomical outbreak of STDs per the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. And they, they even said, what's causing, you know, what's causing the high STD case? What's causing it to do like this? And you'll see that it's the hookup culture. You're talking about herpes. These things are permanent. It says STDs, this is by CNN, are out of control with enormous implications for Americans. Says David Harvey, executive director of National Coalition of STD Directors. The coalition represents state, local, and territorial health departments who focus on preventing STD. If not treated, gonorrhea, chlamydia, and syphilis can have serious consequences such as infertility, neurological issues, and increased risk for HIV. So you have to explain to me how these women rights groups are like so pro-women. They don't care about black women dying in birth, okay? They don't care about the, the assault and the violence happening to minorities in black communities, okay? And now they don't care about STDs that's affecting everybody? Because they're still pushing this free sex narrative. And you can call me anything you want, but you can't have two genders of the same. You cannot have women acting exactly like men because this is the outcome, whether you like it or not. Connie, that's sexist. No, 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 no. It's called a balance of life. I'm not saying you got to be a virgin, don't have sex, but the hookup culture has exploded. You can look it up for yourself. The hookup culture has exploded. You got walks like this by Amber Rose called the slut walk. If you check one of my other videos, I have it about my feminists. You can see the banner when the girls are walking. They're promoting to be a slut. I'm not making this up. And how is that empowering for women? Women have different needs. Women, we want to be women. We want to be respected for being a woman. We don't want to have to be a man. That's what, that's what these extreme radical feminists don't understand. We don't, I, I'm a woman. I love my hair, my makeup, my nails. My, I love my, my facials. I like my pink dresses. I love my flowers. I love everything. I'm the, I'm the ultimate girly girl. If you look in the dictionary, you see a picture of me. Being a girl. I love being a girl. But I want respect for it. I'm emotional. I'm sensitive. I cry. But I don't want to be demoralized or treated as a second class gender because I embrace femininity. But you have these extreme feminists who say, no, there's no gender roles. And no, there's no difference between men and women. And no, no, it's, it's your environment. It, you, you don't really like makeup. You, you, you don't really want to be a female. You're androgynous. This is, this is crap. And that's why you're seeing the STD rate score high because women are sleeping around the same or even more than men. And you might say, Connie, it's free. Okay, have your free shit. The whole world's going to have a big herpes sore in its face because you can't continue this forever. It's not about using protection because certain things are not, are not protected with condoms. You're going to go down on someone, then use a condom. It's like going outside wearing a raincoat when, it, when, it, when it's the sun. Like, what are you doing? Protecting against the sunlight? It's going to get everywhere. It's going to get in every crack and nook. It doesn't make any sense. So um, I'm going to go over here now. So you, this is a lot of men are secretly having meetings. A lot of men are like, holy crap, what are we going to do? And there's a lot of men in these groups, because I've snuck around, I did my research, who are looking to marry Asian women. And not just Asian in the sense of Japanese and Chinese and Korean. And they're looking, it says, can you please get me a wife from India? All right. Um, who happened, to, this is a guy who was a bus driver in Copenhagen who happened to be white. Um, 
in some local towns with a population of a few thousand, most have a car, there's a few passengers. And he, you know, he, he said, I asked why from Asia. And he was like, you know, there's so many women in Denmark and there's some women in the United States. So there's a website where Scandinavian men can search for wives and American men are searching for wives. This is the magazine, The Economist, published an article on the 3rd, September this year with the title, I don't describing how most Japanese who want to get married find it hard to accomplish their goal. There are many similarities between Japan and advanced post-industry society and Western countries in general. The Economist concludes that women in Japan and other rich Western countries are better educated, career-minded, are financially independent, and do not see traditional family as the only way to leading a life. So they're saying women are not just getting education, they're successfully employed, sometimes earn more than their husbands, and employment statistics of the last decade point point the most modern post-industry society is more suitable for women. Most Western men commit suicide or end up homeless, unemployed, and very often they lose contact with their, women, with their children after divorce. More than half of the marriages end up in divorces here in the United States. Women, on the other hand, are not necessarily seeking marriage with the purpose of getting children, as they can go to sperm banks, which is becoming more often. Before you say that's an extreme, it's actually not. We are all getting accustomed to the new concept, solo mothers, which we are. And they are not, all, they are not single mothers, but mothers who decide to have a child with an anonymous donor. Mind you, the numbers are exploit, <laughs> mind you, their numbers are exploding these days. So you don't need a man to have a child today. Whereas men in Western countries are increasingly finding themselves rejected, unable to fit into a role where you have to try a lot of dating without much success. This, the easy way, of course, is to look for a wife from abroad. So women, so men are looking, white men are looking for women across the seas, accomplished, educated, because they want a traditional woman. They're not talking about some submissive, scared. These women are educated. They're smart. They're, they're, they're not hiding from, you know, people and they're looking for marriage too. A lot of them see the white American males attractive comes with that nice citizenship, but you're not talking about bottom of the barrel women. You're talking about women that are highly educated. Japanese women are, it's a G seven country, you know, Indian women is not the most, you know, advanced country, but they're highly educated, very smart people. They're very successful with academics when they come here. So you're seeing how extreme feminism is affecting you here. If you're a woman, that could be your husband that's not marrying you. That could be your, you know, father of your children who's not going to be with you because of the stigma of us not being pro-family, of us grasping this really hostile ideal towards men. So before you say, Connie, are you going for more clicks? If you've been with hearing me this long, you deserve the drum roll. So I did more research and I got, I, I, this is what's going on. Male sex robots with bionic penises may just replace men in the pleasure department. And I actually read this. I actually went to see who was promoting this story and it's a white extreme feminist. She has a site called from vice. This is her. She has a website called slut ever. And she actually is talking more about having sex with male robots. If you look here, she's actually kissing the robot on the lips. I don't know if you guys can see it. I just clicked on it. Um, so you can see Carly is back with Slut Ever Reloaded. This time around, we open doors to bedrooms, dungeons, and crazy sex laboratories. So these, this, is, this is a white woman um, making the world's first. Like she's having sex with um, a sex doll. And this was on Vice. Um, and they're putting down men saying that um, I can't orgasm during sex. Is my vagina broken? Um, you know, making sex with actual men seem bad and they're kissing this robot here. You can say, Connie, oh my God, this is not uncommon. This is, this is not, a, this is, these are actual channels. These are actual pages. This is not me on this, on the fringe. If you guys been on Facebook, that sex robot has been going around. Don't you think that's a bit demoralizing to men? You never see a status that says new female sex robots with bionic vaginas may replace women. Like, you know, saying something about a man's genitalia, most men are kind of sensitive to that. They don't want to hear that you're going to replace it with a bionic. You know, we, we have vibrators. You know, we, it, it's just it's just very demoralizing. And then when you go over here, this is, this is what I'm talking about. 
I, you know, I'm coming to the end of the video real soon. We like to talk about everything but racial discrimination, even though it's affecting lives, even though women are dying. You know, my brother was talking to me not too long ago about Cam Newton. And I'm going to play the clip of Cam Newton who got killed in the media because he acknowledged a fact. I'm a woman. He's correct. I don't know what routers or routes are. I don't have no idea. And I, I'm not a football savvy person, but I know a few football terms. I'm not a football hardcore. But if you tell me points and, you know, quarterbacks, and if, if you say a few football terms that are really popular, I don't know. But intricately, like routes or routers, I don't know what the hell that is still. So I'm going to play the clip with you really fast. All right? I'm going to play the clip. I take a lot of pride in seeing your receivers play well. Devin Funches has seemed to really embrace the physicality of his routes and, and making getting those extra yards. Does that give you a little bit of an enjoyment to see him kind of trust people out there? It's funny to hear female talk about routes. Like, it's funny. But uh, fun is coming along, man. We're going we gonna, to – this is a big game for – so that's all he said. He said it's funny to hear a female talk about routes. He he's absolutely right. Women don't play men's football. They don't. Women are not like you know most sports the commentators used to actually play the sports. So she went crazy with this. Said it was bad. So it was sexist. It was horrible. It got so bad that he had to actually issue an apology. So you saw what he just said. I'm going to rewind it real, real right there. But uh, fun is coming along. Hold on. Rewind it a little bit. I'll talk about route. So just listen to what he said again. Getting those extra yards. Does that give you a little bit of an enjoyment to see him kind of trust people out there? It's funny to hear female talk about routes. Like, it's funny. But, uh, okay, so that's all this guy said, all right? It's funny to hear a female talk about routes. He got killed for being sexist. He got killed for being a whore. He had to issue an apology, and I, I'm a fair person. His apology didn't match what was said. I took offense to what I said. I understand that my word choice was extremely degrading and disrespectful. Uh, to women and to be honest that was not my intentions and if you are a person who took offense to what I said I sincerely apologize to you uh, I'm a man who tries to be a positive role model in my community and tries to use my platform to inspire others and I own I, I take ownership to everything that comes with that. And what I did was extremely unacceptable. Um, I'm a father to two beautiful daughters. And at their age, I try to instill in them that they can do and be anything that they want to be. Uh, and the fact that during this whole process, I've already lost sponsors and countless fans. I realized that the joke was really on me and I learned a valuable lesson from this and to the, the, the young people who see this. So I was going to stop it. I'm going to stop it. What he did was that evil and vicious. And you're not going to see on this channel often me doing stuff for black guys. But this is but what, what was so crazy is this same girl. OK, she got caught. A few weeks later, a few days, I don't know, a week or so later, where she actually had, she said some pretty racist stuff. She actually had a Twitter account, the, the reporter, and she got caught. Um, let me see if I can find it for you. She got caught, um, you know, saying racist things. And this is what I mean. That guy barely said a, a sentence. It's funny to hear a female talk about routes. That was extreme. That was degrading. That was extreme. For him to issue a, a statement and lose endorsements, that is mad. So let me look. Report, rep, reported in Cam Newton controversy, apologize for racist tweets. Um, should that change people's view on the story? So she said racist tweets. So you know when you talk about somebody, they're going to go uh, and look at your background. 
And she should have known better than to open her mouth if she had racist tweets in her background. You know, Rod Rodrigue's tweets were racist. The fact is, the year the tweets was matched doesn't erase this truth. Like, like you're trying to tell me there's a double standard. Like, I didn't find, as a black woman, I didn't find his, his statement racist. Naming, saying something that's a fact is not sexist. I don't know what the route is. I still don't know what the route is. I don't want to know what the route is. It's not something that um, women know. If you're a woman that knows what a football route is, at the end of this video, watch the comment, you know, go in the comments and see. So I'm just going to end the video right there. My whole point is there's an agenda for white female dominance. You even have some other white females like Jane Fonda, Pamela Anderson, who was like, something is wrong. And these are women that were in Hollywood. These are women that were exposed to a lot of men, a lot of situations that can shed light. Pamela Anderson was a top, top, you know, sexual um, person in the sense she was a sex symbol. Jane Fonda was a big star back in the day. You probably don't remember, but... You know, it's it's serious out there. It, it, it's 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 attacking us on all fronts. Extreme feminism is not good for your health because if you are following the sexual habits of extreme feminists, you see that the it's it's skyrocketing. And I actually want to show you. I know I said bye, but right before I go, I just want to show you something real quick. You know, um, so because I I forgot one of my windows. So you guys can see I'm not exaggerating, but um, look what's happening. So I'm ending this video, but look before I go, before I go, you have to see this. You have to see this. Netflix and chill, the effects of casual hookup culture. All right. So if you and your friends use the taps, apps like Tinder or Grindr, Craigslist, casual encounters, or simply meet with someone after they want to have Netflix and chill, you are all part of of the casual hookup culture, which apparently has a major downside, you know, and it, it's, it's that all of these anonymous tech savvy options have led to some undesired consequences, a rise in sexually transmitted diseases and sexual infections, STDs and STIs. To get a scope of how big the problem is, here are statistics from the smallest state in U.S., Rhode Island, from 2013 to 2014. The number of infection slipping cases increased by 79%. The number of gonorrhea, gonorrhea cases increased by 30%. The number of newly identified HIV cases increased by 33%. Young people are not only the most likely to use apps and technology to find a fast fling, they're also the most likely to contract an STD. According to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, young people between the ages of 15 and 24 contract half of all new STD cases in U.S., even though they account for only a fourth of the population that's having sex. It's clear that people want to have sex and don't feel the need to be in a relationship to do so, and casual sex is starting to be seen as less taboo, but it doesn't stop some of the negative consequences, like STDs, that strictly monogamous relationships help ward off. So as you see extreme feminists pushing women and pushing women and pushing women to be like men, have sex like men, go out there like men, look what's happening. Look what's happening. It's, it's, this is crazy. People are dying for this. And you're like, Connie, blame the men. There's always been a balance in the history of mankind. Men want sex, girls want sex too, but normally, you know, girls want some type of romance, some type of structure. I'm not saying you can never, ever, 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 ever have a one night stand. We're all adults here, but we have a culture. We have a culture of hookups. It's not the same thing as this is happening. It has replaced, listen to me, extreme feminists have got it to be replaced. It's replacing relationships. People are now marrying their hookups, not their relationships. People they hooked up with, and you know, probably the pum pum's tired and probably the eggplant's tired. I'm just going to stop my sexual escapades right here. You want to get married? And this is what we basing divorce on. So it, it's a destruction all over. People are not getting adequate care. Women are dying in childbirth. The people who are real statistics in terms of domestic violence, domestic abuse, molestation, rape, the real victims, they're not getting help, they're not getting attention. Men are being emasculated. They can't speak to women in public. 
They can't say hello to women in public. I, I did my I did my other video. Look at my other Pamela Anderson video where she has the barbed wire um thing. You a guy got fired from a law firm for simply asking a girl out through LinkedIn. And it wasn't even nasty, it was pretty, pretty pleasant. So that's what I want to say. I want to bring attention to this, that this whole white extreme feminist, it, it doesn't make any sense because if y'all was that feminist, Hillary would be president. You guys gave the presidency to Donald Trump. I'm not making it up. That's the Vox. That's the, I just read that article. That that's who that that's what happened. Fifty three percent. He couldn't have won without them. Women for Trump. Women for Trump. So anyway, that's Connie. Um, raise awareness. I do want to talk about these issues and see what we can do for solutions. I'm all about solutions to raise awareness about childbirth. I'm actually working on that as a project. If you want to help me, I'm I'm doing it through my church for a Catholic charity. Um, cause I believe that you shouldn't have to die to have a baby. I'm raising awareness with STDs and talking about traditional values. Um, this is not working out, you know, getting gonorrhea and chlamydia and STDs and making yourself more prone to AIDS. It's just not working out. Um, bringing awareness about racial discrimination and racial biases, because that's, what's causing doctors and hospitals to overlook basic complications that could have been avoided over 60% of maternal complications could have been avoided. So I'm all about solutions. I'm all about how we can get together. How can we network? How can we turn this around? I'm not about causing division. I'm like, okay, it's nasty. It's icky. It's uncomfortable. But we have to beat the carpet to get the dirt out. Or unless it's going to be con continuous chaos. So thank you guys for listening. I appreciate. God bless. Please check the description box for more links. Please like and subscribe and get notifications. Please check my playlist so it's, more, it's a little bit more organized so you can see the subjects I talk about. And also check my link for Patreon.